Greetings, it's Dr. Dominique Reese, and I'm here with today's Tip Tuesday. So today's Tip Tuesday is Real Housewives of Atlanta, Kenya Moore, got this all the way right, and you should too. And if you watch this uh, series, you know that this past weekend, um, one of the stars of the show, Kenya Moore, she recently reached out to an estate planning attorney and she was trying to protect her assets. And so, so many times, especially within the black community, we do not protect what we're building. So I want to help educate you about the things that you can protect and why you too need to consider the types of protective documents that could apply to your financial situation and why they're so important. So basically, uh, Kenya was researching and, and getting educated about uh, wills and trusts, and it is so very important for our community to understand the difference between these two documents, but also how they can impact your financial life uh, while you're still alive, as well as once you're dead and gone. And so most times, I hear clients complain that they don't have any assets to protect, so they feel like these documents are not for them. Now remember, in the previous Tip Tuesday, I talked about why financial planning is for you and why you should be doing it. There's so many myths to debunk. There's so many misconceptions about what it is and if it's for you or not. But let me remind you, financial planning is for you. And whether you have a little or a lot, you need to engage the process and engage it professionally. So that's in the spirit that I'm bringing today's to Tuesday because whether you know it or not, you do have assets. If you look around just in your home, there are things that you own and an asset is something you own. Ideally, it is also a vehicle that produces its own income stream. So when you gather assets, when you build assets, when you are investing assets, it's all so that those assets can generate their own stream of income. Ideally, once they start to do that, you'll be making more money. However, let's say something happens to you. What are you going to do with your assets? Who knows what to do with your assets? And so many times, we've seen it over and over, right? We see our community pulling together, crowdfunding money, holding barbecues, holding car washes so that we can bury someone's auntie, bury someone's child, bury someone's parents because there were no protective vehicles in place, like insurance. And so when this happens, families fight. Not only do they fight over the money, but they fight over the things. And that can be very difficult for a family during a time of bereavement. Frankly, that is your responsibility. It is not your family's responsibility to try to figure out what to do with your stuff once you're dead and gone. And so when we talk about estate planning, we are talking about your private estate. When you have nothing in place, that's when probate comes in. And I know you're familiar with that term. You may not know all of the ins and outs, but you've heard of it before. If you do not want to have to engage the probate process, it is very important that you start to consider the protective documents that you may need to put in place so that you and your family don't have to go through that. So one of the documents that we learned about from that show, if you watched, was called a will. Another document was called a trust. So these are very uh, similar in how they work. They are uh, created to protect your assets, but they work very differently. And they don't cover the same types of assets. Typically, a will is created while you're still alive. And it basically outlines what assets you have and how you would like them to be distributed upon your death. However, a trust, on the other hand, is what you can set up while you're still alive and still have control over the assets within that trust. You will identify some very important people to help you manage and execute the trust, um, and those are things that you will do while you're still alive. So a trust gives you very, uh, very good flexibility in terms of deciding who you want on your team, the role that they will play, and um, how you want things to be distributed upon your death. However, there are two other documents I want to bring to your attention. One is known as a health 
health proxy, and the other is an advanced directive. These are also very important financial related documents that you want to take a look at. If you've never heard of them before, just Google them. Every state on your, on every state's website, they have a template of an, adva of an advanced directive and a health proxy. So I encourage you, no matter what state you're in, to take a look at your state's website, Google health proxy or advanced directive, and take a look at these forms. They're very important because they help to decide how your um, health-related treatments will be given in the event that you're incapacitated and cannot make decisions for yourself. You also may be familiar with the power of attorney. That is another um, document that you want to become familiar with in case at any point you need to execute this document. Sorry. So. You've learned about five documents, a living will or a will, a trust, advanced directives, health proxies, power of attorneys. Those are just five documents that you want to become familiar with. Please stop thinking you don't have assets to protect. And here's a quick exercise for you to really determine that one, you do have assets to protect and two, you may have more than you think. I challenge you to do what's called an asset inventory. An asset inventory is when you literally take inventory of all of the things that you own, from your clothing to your jewelry to um, anything that you see in your home, furniture, uh, pots and pans, um, photo albums, uh, crystals, glassware, any and everything that you own, you should log in this asset inventory. And if you can, try to put a market value on each item. And I'm talking about going through your closet, looking at all of your clothes, inventory for all of your jeans, your shoes, your bags, every single item. And this can also be very helpful if you're reviewing your insurance for the year because we pay for homeowners insurance, we pay for renters insurance, and those policies require that we know the value of our assets. In the event that you need to make a claim on those things, um, there's some money involved. And you want to be sure that you've accurately valued all of the assets you own. So this asset inventory can be a really good exercise, especially at the end of the year, while you're cleaning things out, you're purging, you're getting rid of stuff, you're going into a new year, you may be getting more organized. This could be a very helpful tool to help you understand the value of the assets that you do own. So create an asset inventory. If you need some support with that, please reach out. I'm Dr. Dominique Reese, the owner of Reese Financial Services, and I look forward to serving you. Hope this Tip Tuesday was helpful. Peace.